Welcome, welcome, y'all. I've got three girls who sleep in their makeup in the house today. I've got Megan, Kristen, and Lauren here. And they have their own podcast called Girl, I Slept in My Makeup. And they are here to share about the life of their incredible mother, who they lost in October of last year, tragically. And so I'm really honored that they're here to share their story through grief, although they are still in it, and the different ways that they responded to that tragedy, the things that are helping them get through it. And it's just a really honest and transparent look at grief. And as well, they they unpack for us what made their mom so amazing and so for anybody walking through grief or experiencing it or for anybody like me who really just wants to know how to be a great mom this is the episode for you so enjoy my new friends girls who sleep in their makeup (laughs) lauren megan and Kristen. well thanks for doing this girls that slept in their makeup (laughs) <laughs> yeah, thanks for having us. We're so excited. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm so excited for this episode, and we're going to talk about um, some— all, Well, we're, we're knowing the conversation we've had already, we're going to talk about a lot of things. Yeah, but yes. I've got Kristen, Lauren, and Megan on here with me, y'all, and um, they have a podcast called Girl, I Slept in My Makeup. And so should we start at childhood, or sh- should we start at the podcast inception? <laughs> That's a great question. Either what do you one. think, Lauren? Yeah, uh, we can we can give some history just quickly. Yeah. I would love um, to hear it. Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell th- these are sisters, y'all. Yeah, three sisters yes. here. And if you know me, you know I love sisters. So we're all yeah. jiving. I'm an honorary yeah. sister today. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. for sure. Okay. <laughs> and that is kind of one thing about um, our family is we had lots of honorary friends that our home was kind of a. Um, come in and come as you are and the more the merrier type of environment. Um, So I'm Lauren and I'm the oldest of the three sisters. We also have an older brother and then there's Megan and and then (laughs) Kristen is the baby. (laughs) Um, And so we, we were all born and raised in Austin, Texas. And um, we had a, just a home that we like to say, um, of course, we were a normal family with lots of chaos and mess, but um, the underlying foundation of it is we were just blessed with a mom and dad that um, there was a lot of love. And in yeah. that just kind of um, overpowered anything and everything that we went through individually and as a family, a family unit as well. And so... Um, we all grew up and we all kind of yeah. <laughs> um, have have different stories of our early adulthood. Mm-hmm. But one thing that's remained is even despite our age difference, there's a 10-year age difference between oldest and youngest. And wow. um, we've always just had this tightness, you know, it's mm-hmm. like we might yeah. we might fight hard, but we love harder. And and um we always just mm-hmm. um we talk about it. We don't hold, we don't hold on to things and and we yeah. work through things. And so we've just always remained super close. And um, yeah. and we do, we recognize um, just that that is a special thing, you know, having lots of friends yeah. in our lives that don't always have that, you know, so we do cherish yeah. it and we love to bring people in. So thank you for having us. Our sister-in-law actually had a podcast and uh, she was like, y'all need to get into it. And we're like, we've always wanted to do something as sisters. Yes. And our mom actually was the one who really oh. kind of was pushing us to do it. Um, and Kristen was the one who called us. And Kristen, I'll let you interject here and tell the well, story <laughs> of your well, call to me. I think Lauren. it really yeah. started when I was, I'm really into like self-help books and really self-help anything. And I remember sitting reading this book and I got yeah. really frustrated because it almost felt like all this self-help stuff, you know, don't get me wrong. I still love it, but it almost felt like it was like I had to reach this unattainable place. And then like, I was going to be good for the rest of my life, right? Like you reach this place and then you never make a mistake again. Um, and so I was like, wait, why don't we talk more about like mm-hmm. making those mistakes? Like, in, does that make sense? So I don't know. That's kind of where girl I slept in my makeup 
Oh, came from. It's a metaphor (laughs) for like, hey, we all sleep in our makeup and that's okay. And, um, and also I had gotten a facial and I'll never forget the facialist was like, okay, so what's your skin routine? And I was like, (laughs) uh, I don't have one. And she, her mouth like dropped to the floor. Like she was in (laughs) shock and she was like, how old are you? And I was like, uh, 27 or however (laughs) old I was. And she just like was so shocked. So that kind of played a part of it too. And I, that's kind of where the name came from and um, originally. And then I brought it to the sisters and I think y'all just loved it and agreed. Jamie, I think too, it was just kind of a unique situation where we are three different ages. We At the time, we lived in three different states. We started our podcast in 2019 Um and oh, we, perfect time. Just, yes, yeah, perfect I know, time right? <laughs> yeah. And we just had three different perspectives at three different life stages. Love and that. so um, we just wanted to really just kind of live our, share our life a little bit and just let people know if anything, they're not alone. So I love it so much. And with talking about, because, you know, we've all, we've already talked about sisters and my love for my sisters, and we are all so different. We have taken different paths in life. <laughs> Yes. We've had different experiences. We all sometimes probably have different beliefs. I mean, all I mean, we're our own people, you know. But mm-hmm. a family that can um love and stay connected and close knit in the midst of people taking their own paths, I mm-hmm. feel like is rare. So okay, well, you guys tell me how are you different and give me <laughs> a little descri- give me a little description on like the w- different the different paths you y'all took. So I would say that um, being the first girl, as we kind of touched on our podcast with you, that um, that's considered like first child in a family order. Mm-hmm. And so I I took a lot of those kind of stereotypical traits. I'm, I would say type A. Um, I was just my mom's sidekick. And I really, I help, I'm a natural just helper, nurturer. And so I really helped her do her life. And I also helped a lot with the girls, with Megan and Kristen, when they, when they were born and young, I literally felt like they were my own babies and I just loved Mm -hmm. that. Um, and so, um, anyway, went through school. I kind of, I experienced some, um, some traumatic things in my life starting at a, a, I would say around a teenager age that really, um, shaped me in in my faith and um mm-hmm. in in where how I approach um hardships and trauma in life. Mm-hmm. And so I'm grateful for for all of it um because it's you know who I am. And I would say I've always kind of known who I was and been and been confident in that um and confident in my relationship with God because there's been many times throughout my life where it felt anyway, although it probably wasn't the truth, but that it was just him and me. Um, and so anyway, I went on and kind of traditional life, um, college, met my husband in college. Um, we are still together today and we got married and, um, we have a one beautiful nine-year-old son and, um, and we have my, my husband's from a tiny town in Texas, but, um, we have lived all over, which is just kind of funny. My mom's like, oh, I thought I was safe with you marrying a Texas boy. And here he is oh, taking you across the world to, to China. To China. <laughs> so yeah, so we lived in China um, outside of DC and then now just recently back in Texas. Um, this is Megan. And so I'm the third of four. So I would call myself a typical middle child. Uh-huh. Um, very much just try to be invisible and not cause any issues. Um, very much just watched my siblings get in trouble and tried to <laughs> you not learned. do what yeah. they did. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like that describes me in a lot of ways. I was a people pleaser from a young age, just wanted to be liked, wanted to be loved. Um, but also didn't want to like bring too much attention to myself. Um, so a weird combination there, I guess, but As I grew up and I actually, it always is funny to me that Lauren traveled the world because that was like, I wanted to do that. So I was a exchange student in Austria when I was in high school. And then I studied abroad in college. So I was very much love to get out and about. But now um, I am married with two young kids, five and three little girls. 
and I couldn't be happier. I'm only ever home, never traveling. <laughs> but <laughs> yes. um, so it's always You're funny. You're traveling just, around your home in a rapid pace. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Chasing but I would, them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, just always trying to challenge myself, learn. I love to help people. I'm a manager at my job of people. And I just... I think at the end of the day, I'm still, I wasn't as strong in my faith like Lauren was from a young age. I think I've questioned things a lot throughout my life and really struggled in that way. But I feel like in this last year, especially, I just have this like strong sense of like, I finally feel like I know who I am Mm -hmm. in God and that I just want to do exactly what he wants to do. And I think all my life before I'm 35 years old, old, I realized I was just doing what I wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, I guess I would say I'm a typical youngest child too. I guess we're not that unique. Um, (laughs) But I, you know, I'm the youngest, I'm the baby and um, I'm pretty darn stubborn. Um, I, gosh, you know, I'm also very (laughs) persistent. So people say like, if I'm, if I really want something, I will make it happen some way, somehow. Um, I'm, you know, I just love people really hard. My love language is spending time with. So like, if you want to make me feel loved, just show up and be there with me. (laughs) Um, Yes, I love that. And, uh, you know, in high school, I started pursuing a music career, which was really crazy. And I did some crazy things at a very young age. Um, And then I decided to move to Nashville, Tennessee, where I didn't know anyone and met my husband on a flight on Southwest Airlines. And now we're married. And yeah. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) So Southwest is open seating. So I, you know, we saw each other. (laughs) Oh, that's right. I forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you chose him. He chose me because I was like, I'm not going (laughs) to do any, you know, so and we saw each other. other. It was at Love Field Airport, <laughs> actually, in Dallas. And um, we saw each other in the airport. And I said to myself, oh, I think, you know, I hope he's on my flight. And sure enough, he was. And I sat down. And I was like, oh, I hope he comes sits by me. And then he didn't. And then what I found out later is he had to work up the courage to come sit next to me. And he said, can I sit next to you? And I was like, sure. And so, you know, his, after our first date, I called my mom. And I said, <laughs> I met my husband. And, you know, that's... And now here we are. Did y'all like each other's husbands or boyfriends at the time? Yeah. Yes. Really? Yeah, For I've the most been, part? Yeah. The sisters can be me, so protective, the young, I'm right? the most protective. And she was not, like, quiet about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's yeah. funny. But, yeah, for me being like, the canceled, oldest. Canceled, canceled, um, canceled. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And with me being the oldest, they, um, whenever Megan brought Bobby home and same with Michael for Kristen, I, I adored both of them and still do. They're really great guys. So yeah, I would say I didn't connect with men very easily. So if I brought Mm -hmm. a guy home, it was like, we're done. This is it. (laughs) Yeah. 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 (laughs) So funny. So, Lauren, you were talking about how you had traumas before you met your husband just in growing up. What was the process like, you know, walking through that Mm -hmm. into, I don't know the trauma, so I don't know if it's male related or what, but into, you know, kind of like where you, where you ended up? Sure. Um, So... I think that the process was, so I was introduced. Okay. Let me back up. My dad, our dad was like a devout Catholic. And so we kind of grew up going to the Catholic church, kind of having to be dragged. We didn't, and I'll speak for myself. I didn't really resonate with it. Um, I didn't get excited about it, but we were all baptized and went through um, first communion and confirmation and all of that. And our mom she was kind of more, she didn't really grow up in a family. Um, it was just kind of like, she didn't really know what she kind of found God in her thirties. And, yeah. um, she just went like full force in. And so I, oh. we kind of got the unique opportunity to just dive into that with her. And so we grew up, like I went and my mom and I would go visit, um, like all black churches or like churches where they're laying hands and speaking in tongues and then like Methodist. Mm-hmm. And so we did all the things. Um, yeah. And then it's funny cause my mom ended up landing back at becoming a Catholic. She kind of just did it for mm-hmm. my dad. Um, but she, 
learned to really, um, there was parts of it more so just the worship of it that she really loved. But anyway, back to your question. Um, so I was introduced at a young age and I went to a summer camp in fifth grade and that's where I technically gave my life to Jesus. But really from that point, it was a pivot point in my life where it was just that I was kind of one of those kids where I just kind of did as I was told and I wasn't, I was not a why kid. Um, yeah. Yeah, And so in some ways that served me as far as just faith coming easy to me. Like yeah. I liked that. And not getting idea. into trouble, I'm sure too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I, I certainly got into trouble, but oh, you that, did? Okay. that was later in life. But oh, yeah, okay. no, we'll not at that, that age. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. I was a very rule follower, like mm. great student back at fi- yeah. in fifth grade. But um, so anyway, I, um, I would say there was just a few things in high school that I went through that, um, that for a teenager at that age were very traumatic, but I somehow just with the unconditional love of family and friends Mm -hmm. and really, I just, I just dove all in with God and I just, he was my, he was my therapy. He was my just sidekick. And I think that I was able to kind of drop that, um, pedestal, I guess that maybe Mm -hmm. I had him on before where it's like, I, the way that I talked to him and interacted him and still it's carried on to this day. It's just as if I'm talking to you right now, you know, it's kind of like I looked at him as just my absolute best friend, you know, and my father. And I, and I talked to him that way and it was just very, um, I guess real, you know, from a really young age. And so, um, and I think I kind of call this just a gift. I feel like I've always had a gift of forgiveness and that's not just for other people, but also myself. And I don't, wow. um, like some of my friends that know, you know, everything and sisters too. It's like, th- there's, there's truly no judgment. Like it, wow. I'm somehow, and that's all God, it's not me, but I just think yeah. that, um, that's just a gift that I was given. So I don't carry, I, I can easily leave stuff behind um, and not let it affect me today, you know? Wow. That really is a gift. Yeah. I mean, so many people take what happened at five years old to the grave with them, mm-hmm. you know? Not that it doesn't continue to be there and have happened, have had happened, but right, right. that's, uh, that really is a gift. Okay. So tell me, um, tell me a little bit about your mom. <laughs> Where yeah. do we start? We oh, love, we love talking mm-hmm. about her. Aww. She, um, I can start. She, yeah. I think she was literally brought into this earth to be a mom. Oh. That was like her dream. There, I feel like you rarely meet women. Well, maybe, I don't know. I definitely didn't know like if I was meant to be a mom, but I'm so mm-hmm. glad that God gave me children. Yeah. But my mom was one of those, our mom was one of those moms that like, that was her dream to have children. Mm-hmm. Um, And I think because she was, so I guess the first story is her birth. Um, Gran, our grandmother, always tells the story of she had a really tough labor with her first daughter, so mm. our Aunt Debbie. And so she had a lot of people praying over her when she was going to mm. give birth to her mom. They were really scared um, that she wouldn't make it through. Yeah. And so um, she actually had all these people praying over her and Basically, she felt no pain when my mom came into the world uh, wow. and no drugs, just oh. <laughs> zero pain, no d- drugs or anything. Oh. And my mom, she An says, Angel from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she didn't even cry uh, oh. when she came out. Oh. Um, literally, like the story is kind of crazy when Gran tells it to us. Um, so that's like the first story that I just feel like kind of explains her mom that like, she came into this world as this just like sweet soul. And I feel like that carried throughout. She was a very sensitive person. Um, and me and her had a lot of talks in this last year because she lived really close to me recently, um, you know, in the last five years. And so this in 2020, I got to spend a lot of time with her. And she, I had trouble with 2020. I was like in a depression and yeah. You know, she opened up to me that when she was younger, she she had talked to God and was like, I'm too sensitive for this world. Like I don't I don't think I can last here. And he kind of told her, Well, I'm sorry, like, but you I need you there type of thing. Oh, wow. And so she had a lot of spiritual moments mm-hmm. from an early age, mm-hmm. I guess is how I would describe her. And then just as a mom, 
she was just the most like loving person. Like we feel bad or I feel bad when I talk about my mom to other people because I'm just like, holy moly. Like we literally had the best mom ever. Because like, they didn't have your yeah. mom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that just is so like beautiful though. Yeah. Oh. Unconditional love. And it wasn't just to us. Like she would, anybody that came into our lives, friends, mm -hmm. Whatever she just saw people for who they were, and she saw people like God saw them, and she wanted them to see. Mm -hmm. She would ask questions like all my friends would come and have like their long talks with Mama Jill, and it was like oh. she was always trying to pull out of them the things that were good instead of everybody focuses what they don't like about themselves. You know, mm -hmm. just she uh, was the best Nana in the yeah. world. My girls Aww. still talk about her every day. They had a bond that all it's just spiritual like it's hard yeah. to explain like you can't not believe in god when you watch i don't know yeah. just the bond that she had with them <laughs> and i guess to so to catch your listeners up to speed so <laughs> our yeah sorry <laughs> our um our mom who um 65 years old completely healthy um in some ways just felt like life was beginning best mom best grandmother and um, October of 2020, she was um, killed in a tragic car accident with a big dump truck that flipped her car. And our sweet nine-year-old niece was in the car with her at the time. And thank you, Jesus, that she um, survived and is and is great today. Um, but our our mom did pass, and it was um, right actually outside as she was pulling out of Megan's neighborhood. So poor. Poor Megan has had to um, just, you know, mm -hmm. uh, drive past that all lots day, every therapy. day. Yeah, lots of therapy. And um, uh, so our grief journey for all all of us, but the three of us since we're on here, you know, it looks really different. But I think that the cool thing is just being able to to honor our own journeys and, and respect respect one another. And, um, and yeah, we're just we're in the thick of it still. I mean, it's been seven months, but in some ways it, it feels like yesterday. And in some ways it feels like it's been longer, but, um, we've just learned a whole lot about grief. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to talk about the process of grief, but first of all, I think anybody listening, especially like, I think Megan, you hit on it, like for people who didn't have that kind of mother, you know, mm -hmm. um, but who are going to be mothers someday. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. What What did she do? You all took the th different paths in life, You all, but you all adore her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did she do? Or are, there, are there moments or things that you can point to that like this was what made I, her? Yeah, I'll, I'll speak to that and then y'all can yeah. add. But um, I think that... A uh, big picture is that she loved us unconditionally and she mm. accepted us for who we were from the time we came out of her womb. And she really wow. honored that. And she mm -hmm. approached us in a way that helped us to grow into the person that we were meant to be in God and not who she thought that she might want us to be or or wow. who she, she wanted us to be. Yeah. She didn't. And she really, and not only did she not project, but she, um, what is the word? She just pushed us and, you know, her expectations of us were high, but in the mm -hmm. sense of to become who we were put on this earth to be. And she, as a mother, you kind of ex instinctively you know, when they come out, it's like my son is the same that he was, you know, when he was two months old, you know? <laughs> oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. It's like these little beans are who they are when mm -hmm. they come. And um, and she just had this, uh, she was very intuitive in her parenting style. Um, and she was passionate. She was very passionate and intentional. And um, and I think so we we felt that, you know, and it it really um, it's a part of who we are today and our, um, I would say just confidence in who we are and, in our love, you know, for others. And so, yeah, I would just say kind of big picture. That's, that's who our mom was as a, as a mom. Girls, do y'all have anything to add? No. <laughs> Oh, are we crying? <laughs> That's beautiful. No, it's yeah. beautiful because I'll I'll give you guys a second to catch. Yeah, because I can't imagine like processing it all live like this. But, yeah, um, no. for, 
for those of us who want to be good moms, you mm-hmm. know, like mm-hmm. I'm <laughs> desperate to be a good mom, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Um, but I'm early to the game, like or late, whichever way I'm new. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know, and so it's like to to have three of her girls here saying these things about her. I'm just like, oh, I need to know. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I need I need to know everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. that's how we, like, in all of, like Megan was saying, all of our friends feel the same way. I mean, if you could hear, could have heard the words spoken at her services, and even to this day, you know, friends will be like, it was, it was amazing. Like, we, when she was here, we knew these things and we felt these things, but it's just crazy people from our way past who we haven't seen in who I haven't seen in like 30 years, you know, it's like, do you know that your mom brought me to Jesus? Or do you know that your mom was the only person on this earth that made me feel loved? Um, Do you know? I mean, it's endless and it's like the- It transcended the family, the biological family even. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She was a minister. Yes. I think to give, you know, you- my sister some credit and hopefully me some too. I think we learned too that every parent, no parent is perfect, right? Like we could tell you all the things of what my mom was, but even mm-hmm. she yes. had imperfections. Yeah. And I think we as kids learned to not put sure. her on a pedestal because I think we did do that, or at least I did. Yeah, mm-hmm. Kristen, that's such a good point. And actually, um, I feel like she actually allowed us to see her in that light. That's by, what I was just about to ask is how yes. did she model that? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how do we do it? And so yeah. I think the answer is, I know for me, I can actually remember at a point in high school having a conversation and she really, and, and obviously age appropriate, right? But I think yes. that the more, and many people described her at um, her service as real. And, um, mm. and I think that she was, um, age appropriateness, she was able to share her realness so that we were able wow. to see her. And that might've looked like sharing some of her life experiences in mm-hmm. the past or, you know, and so I think that so gave us So would she set you down and be like, it's story time or did, was it organic? No, or it was. Were you going through something and she tried to relate? Like, how did that work? I'm genuinely like, yeah, yeah. I, I think it, it's both, you know, like okay, yeah. it, was, it was all very organic, but sometimes it was a sit down or sometimes it was just a matter of being like, I totally understand what you're saying because X, Y, and Z, you know? Yeah. 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 I feel like she did that. She just showed her humanity. And like one of the things my husband always said, like him and her would have these like, I mean, hour long conversations. And he's like, I don't know how your mom always does it. She always just gets the truth out of me. Like she just gets the truth. But, and he was like, and I think one of the ways she does it is she is just so humble. Like she's always willing to admit her faults. Mm -hmm. You know, her and my dad, our dad did get divorced later in life when we were all adults. And, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people when divorce, it was hard on us still as adults. Yeah. It was very, very hard. Yeah. And I think one of the things that was so cool that she did is she actually looked back about her whole life because she got married when they were 19. So she was wow. young Yeah. and she grew up, they grew up together and yeah. everything had kids together. And she would look back and say, you know, this is what I could have done differently as a as a wife. That I don't. I didn't. Would, see she would share that with you. Oh yeah, oh, yeah she oh, would yeah. tell me. Wow. And she would tell. And not only that, she was always on my husband's side. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, he for sure misses her because she oh. was always like Megan. You don't do what I did. Like this is what yes. I did wrong. You know, like wow. she was very um, as sweet souled as she was. She was very intense and passionate, and she that's would call you out. That's my favorite combination. You know, like, <laughs> that's my favorite combination. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet as sugar until they blast you. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, she would hit me dead between the eyes, and I'd be like, <laughs> oh. oh, get out of here. But then I'd later just be like, thank you. She's like, right. Oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> well, and I think, too, Megan, what you're de- what you're describing is she, <laughs> she had a gift for seeing things from all different perspectives. And so she was a really good that. sounding board to go to because, and that's why everybody did is because mm-hmm. 
she wasn't just going to tell you what you wanted to hear. She was going to say, well, maybe, you know, and try to, um, it, you know, and I think that's pretty unique in our selfish human very, selves, you know, very unique. Um, yeah. so that, that was always from the time we were little to adults and Megan, same thing. Like I do have to say my husband, um, he's not one to like reach out to people in hard times. Mm -hmm. And I will say whether it was like hard times between the two of us or just hard times in life. Yeah. My mom is the one person that he would ever call, which if you knew my husband says a lot. Yeah. 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 I so. think too, I never thought yeah. as a 32 wow. year old woman, I would miss so much being told I'm proud of you from my mom. Like I miss that more than I ever, oh, like, yeah. I don't even know when she would tell me that I just, I took it so much for granted, you know? And now I'm just like, gosh, it just brings mm, tears yeah. directly to my eyes. Cause it's just like, I just miss it. I didn't realize it had been seven months. For some reason, I thought it was 2019. Mm. Um, and so that's very fresh for y'all. Can you talk about the grief process, how you have handled it, how you are continuing to honor her? Like it's just whatever you want to say about your process losing this woman who had just, in, in your words, I think you said, Lauren, like had just kind of hit her best time of life. Mm-hmm. And what 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 was that like faith wise, and what was that like personally to to take that kind of hit? Yeah, I'll go first because unfortunately yeah. I have to hop off, but um, so I'll just make it super quick. But um, I could sit here all day and talk about yeah. well, mom, but also I love to share just this journey. Um, and I think overall, what we've learned is that um. There is no timeline to grief and yeah. there is no one size fits all. And, um, and it's just a ebb and flow and up and down. And um, I think for me, when it comes to faith specifically, um, it's been like no other, while this trauma feels much bigger than, than any other in my life, um, I've just dived in, you know, and it's like, it's all I got. And um, in a really weird, I've, I've shared this before, but in the moment that I got the phone call and the first, um, with, from the first responder, and he must think I'm so weird. <laughs> like I think back and I laugh and I'm like, it, he must think I'm so weird. But I dropped to my knees and just in the shock of it, and like this is all kind of a blurry memory, but I literally out loud said to Jesus, um, thank you. I don't, I don't know. We will never know or understand why on this side of on this side of our life. But I have to like I've just clung on to the idea that um good has come from it and good will continue to come from it. And that that honestly like hurts my heart to even speak out loud. Say, yeah. Um yeah. Mm -hmm. but I do believe it and that's just what I've hung on to. Um and as far as grief goes, I think that um it's just interesting. I uh, I feel like I honor my. I let myself feel when when I need to cry. I cry, and I usually cry really hard, whether it's in my car or um, rolled up in a ball in my closet. But this Mother's Day was really hard, and I spent about two hours on my closet floor crying. Um, but just letting letting or letting myself feel. Um, and I, unlike my sisters, as I'm sure they'll share, they I've I haven't gone. To therapy yet, um, mm -hmm. but that's something that's next uh, on my list. Um, just and, and we'll see what comes from that. But yeah, I think it's just being really kind, you know, to and just honoring whatever that day brings, whatever feelings and emotions that is. And then for me, it's just man, staying close to God. <laughs> yeah. Like he, he's he's my lifeline. So that's Lauren, where it's how at. Do you talk to your kids about it? Was she Nana? Right, Nana. she was Nana. Yeah. Nana. Okay. So, how do you talk to your kids about her, and how do you keep her memory alive? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. get every the last two minutes out of you. That yes. You left. <laughs> so we yeah. we look at a lot of pictures. We remember oh, okay. stories. That's wonderful. Um, I talk about her kind of as if she's still here, but also I'm I'm really open. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, my nine year old he um he's just been really mature about it. Kids are just so mm -hmm. amazing. They really um, are. yeah, they really are. Yeah. And so, but also he sees me 
um, I don't hide my emotions from him. He sees mm-hmm. me cry. And if he asks me what's wrong, I tell, you know, I'm like, I really miss Nana right now, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so I just, I'm really open about it all. And I, for better or worse, I don't know, but, um, I think it's for better for sure. Yeah. It never, I mean, we always say it as pastors, like it doesn't hurt or it doesn't help anybody to think their pastors are perfect. Mm -hmm. And I guess that goes with what you're saying. It doesn't help kids to think their parents are either Mm -mm. or or have it all in control of the time because sometimes we don't. And what a beautiful picture of I miss my mom. What's your son's name, Lauren? Kai. Kai. I miss my mom, Kai, you Mm -hmm. know, and and he gets to watch you process that in like what I, I mean, I'm not a therapist, but what I think is a very healthy way yeah yeah sure so yeah and um to answer your question for me Mm -hmm. uh, i think we all three have you know gone through grief differently it's hard to like put into words but i think the main thing that i've learned is it's kind of just one of those things that you don't understand until you go through it and it yeah it does make me feel an urge to help other people that are grieving in a way because I feel like it's something that people shy away from talking about. And I know every personality is different and there's lots of personalities out there that wouldn't want to talk about it. And that is great Mm -hmm. and okay too. But just letting people know what you need, I think has been good for me because people will say something and I'm like, no, like I want to talk about my mom. So don't feel like you can't ask me about it. Um, can so I ask for, you something else on that, Megan? Yeah. Um, because for those of us who haven't experienced that sort of grief, yeah. I think we can be careful, maybe overly careful at times, if this makes sense. We don't like I, I even yeah. asked y'all, like, are you OK with talking about her? Like, because we don't know. Would yeah. you say that's that's across the board with all of you sisters? Like, do you feel like you love talking about her? Because you told me that, but do you feel like it helps people in similar situations to talk about it? I think that's my personal opinion is I think it's important to talk about. I don't think you'll really get through your levels of grief unless you Mm -hmm. talk about what is going on with you emotionally about the death. I mean, I I go, I've been going to therapy. I started very quickly because especially it being by my neighborhood, I could not stop replaying the accident over and over and over and over. And I took a lot of blame to myself because we had left Mm. town and she had just dropped off my kids. Um, And initially when the first responder called, they said it was my daughter in the car and, you know, and it just, we're so grateful that our niece is okay. It was just a lot of trauma that, you know, especially in the beginning. And so, I think for me, I'm actually not the first person to talk about my emotions. Um, I actually prefer Mm -hmm. not to talk about stuff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So that's what I think it's taught me is like going to therapy and doing um, even these brain exercises on myself with the trauma. It's helped so much. Um, And so that's where I'm kind of at with my grief. Like I, it's a roller coaster. I, even though I've gone through therapy or I'm still going to therapy, doing these brain exercises that she does with me, like I still fall to my knees and just cannot believe she's not here. Like, it's just unfathomable to think like she was our best friend, you know? Um, I saw her every single week. My kids still ask about her every Uh, pretty much every day we talk about Nana. And so to answer your question about the kids piece, I have a five and three-year-old who saw her every week. So it was a big, just like physical change for us. Um, So I agree with Lauren. I think just being open and honest and talking about it is like, at least for us has worked. I don't know about worked, but like it's, it's Mm -hmm. working for us, I guess. Um, And just, I talk about how Nana's with us all the time. And now Mm -hmm. like I'll hear Joe say, I just felt Nana, like the wind blew. And she's like, I felt <laughs> Nana. And I was like, you did? And I'm like, yeah. You know, and that's just so cool. Like that they, you know, kids do help yeah. you get through it in a weird way. They're they're smarter and less, you know, sense. jaded yeah, by the true. world <laughs> than we are. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you asked yeah. um, how this grief has affected our relationship with God. And it's funny, I get asked that quite a bit. Um, and I can totally see how something like this would make you turn your back on God and, you know, really question uh, your faith. And what's interesting is kind of the opposite happened with me. Um, 
you know, my relationship with God my whole life kind of felt like it was through my mother. Like I felt like my direct contact with Mm -hmm. him was through her, which is so interesting. And I didn't fully realize that until she was gone. And then it was like this moment where I was like, I felt God's presence. And he just, I heard him say over and over, it's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn to be with me. Really, God was my only lifeline, to be honest. And those, especially when it first happened, I just remember Mm -hmm. feeling and telling my husband and a therapist that I was like, I feel like I'm going to die. Like, I I can't take this pain. And Mm -hmm. God was literally the only thing that really kept me going. So... Um, and I know everybody's different, but that's personally kind of what happened with me. Yeah. And yeah. Kristen, how, like, how, like, practically for anybody walking through this with, you know, y'all in different ways, how did he keep you going? Was it, like, was it, was it something that you sensed? Was it just like, how did he involve, yeah. how did he, that's, come into that place. That's such a good question. For me personally, it was, it was a presence. It was this overwhelming presence that to be honest Mm. with you, that I had never felt in my life. Um, and it just felt like I needed, you know, I think a lot of my life I ran away from Christianity. I ran away from church. I ran away from my faith. Mm -hmm. Um, and for the first time in my life, I Mm -hmm. a thousand percent knew I had zero control and that he was fully in control. Like I said, I'm my relationship and my faith is still growing. Like I I even say like can y'all pray cuz this is new for me. Like I, I love that. You know, faith has always been there. It's always yeah. been underlining in my life, but it's never been in the forefront, right? Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. I want to be honest with that mm-hmm. because I still, you know, there's times where I still question. I still, you know, I'm like, well, I don't know now. Like, is this mm-hmm. really what's happened? But I o- always go back to that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, I always go back real. to that moment where mm-hmm. it was just so clear. Right. I think yeah, for I me, too. it was like, it was either I let him in fully or I could not be on this earth any longer. And I wanted to be here, you know, and I, I know that sounds morbid, but. Yeah. No, it doesn't at all. It it makes perfect sense to me. Maybe we're all morbid, but it makes perfect sense to me. Honestly. I think that everybody's grief is different. And I think that Mm -hmm. there are people that are going to have to grief like grieve God in a way, like they're going to have to go there to and be mad at God. Like that's their journey maybe because Mm -hmm. I've read a few like grief books and it is interesting. Like there's a lot of anger that comes with death and it can be Mm -hmm. anger at yourself, anger at God, anger at the person that died. Mm -hmm. There's all this anger that can happen. And I think it just depends on maybe like the physiology of the person too. Mm -hmm. But I think you have to get to a point where you have to decide, like Kristen said, that you know, because when you go back to the Bible, and I don't know the Bible like you, so you would have to tell me the Bible verse. But the you know, I that, do not know references, so you're all on your own, girl. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just that, like with trials, like God never said yes. that we wouldn't it suffer life, yes, and this, wouldn't have trouble. Yep. Yeah, and that's what I always would in go this back world, to. We're and, gonna have trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. In this world, we're gonna have trouble, and like it sucks that that's the case. But it just (laughs) opens up knowing that feeling that spiritual Mm -hmm. connection, like, and you just have to make a choice. You have to make a choice whether you're Mm going to believe or not. And Mm -hmm. I think maybe because our mom was such a believer that that helped us. And I literally just open my Mm -hmm. Bible now when I'm like feeling like when I'm just crying and crying and crying, I'm like, okay, I'm going to focus on God. What does he want? You know, and that's, I don't know if that's helpful, but... (laughs) Cause that's what I, I didn't know how to start. I was like, okay. this was new to me. So I was like, what do I, what do really? I do with yeah. like, what's the daily routine that I need to right. implant, you know, put into place to really make this relationship yeah, yeah, happen yeah. Uh, in full force. And really there's not, there's no really answer. And so what I started doing is every morning I meditate with the church Chrome app and I open my, you know, my uh, oh, daily devotional it. and yeah. that's just my, and I, mm-hmm. I'm st- working on talking to him directly. So I think it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Like you were supposed to do A, B, and C to be this great Christian or whatever, you know, but there's, I don't think that's reality. 
Mm. Yeah. There is no A, B, and C. Nope. Nope. (laughs) That's just stuff people put out there to try and have answers for things that there are no answers for. Yeah. And it's okay for there not to be answers for this kind of tragedy and for this kind of grief. And I just like, I'm so in awe. I I wish I knew her. I'm just so in awe of her that she raised (laughs) y'all. And that even in her death, she is being honored in these sorts of ways and that the life she lived in front of you. And I keep going back to this, like, what did she do? What did she do? And I, again, there's no ABC for that too, either. Yeah. Probably, <laughs> you know, but well, I just, she I did want, give a parenting tell me, tell me, podcast. Yeah. I was going to say, so okay, get, yeah, that's <laughs> with, the, with yeah. the podcast, we actually had planned to have her on as a regular guest. And she oh. unfortunately only did one episode with us, but it was on parenting. <gasps> um, so if you want to listen to it, you can. You can oh, kind of sc- scroll back. And um, I think it's a lot more simple than we make it, honestly. It's just about like mm-hmm. honoring the child. And we actually just interviewed a child therapist on our podcast last week. And wow. she kind of said the same thing. It's I think all of us are dealing with our own pain as parents too. Mm-hmm. And when we can really work on healing ourselves. It's kind of just happens naturally to the children, but honestly just honoring who the child is, not who you want them to be. Um, and she did I that for you. That's what she did. Yeah. Yeah. I just did. love that we get to honor her even after she's passed, you know, and you know, she's, she's not, she's not suffering a bit up there. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that's she, what we're like. She's the lucky she one. Must- She's the lucky one. Yeah. Again, back to our morbidness. But for real, yeah, it always yeah. is so much harder for the people left behind. And I just, mm-hmm. it's such a testament to who she was that both of you clung to Jesus. And it sounds so simple, but what else do we have on this life? And I love, Kristen, just your authenticity and your journey of it all because that's mm-hmm. so real. And I think it's just going to help yeah. people. Like, <laughs> For, like you don't have to know a bunch and go scream <laughs> and you know or visit a thousand churches to have peace he can come right absolutely. in the middle of a closet <laughs> absolutely yes. you know and I just love that perspective of it because sometimes us in the church world we can get so spiritual about things and we can get a b and c about things right. and there is none in God's kingdom he is we have access to him when we come and it's just such a testament to your mom in that you both, all three of you, you yes. clung to Jesus in the moment yeah. that she left this earth. And yeah, I am happy for her, but I, I grieve with you all in that you, you lost a huge you. matriarch. And, Thank you. And I honor her, and I think she would be very, very proud of your response mm-hmm. to her <laughs> passing. And um, I just love that you're so open and honest because I can imagine it's it's a, a bit triggering or traumatic to talk about it being so fresh still. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's important to talk about and I think vulnerability is, um, it just helps everybody. It helps you because mm-hmm. you get it out, but then it also shows other people that it's okay. Mm-hmm. To be vulnerable exactly. and have emotions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you would say to people walking through the gr- a grief journey right now, specifically with death? I think for me, it would be resources yeah. or. Yeah. I think for me, it would be no matter what you're feeling, you, it's valid and it's okay. And to let yourself feel whatever mm-hmm. you're feeling, whether right. it's anger, whether it's um, just full pain, you know, let yourself feel it. Um, and, you know, talk yeah. about it if you want to and just seek, you know, for me, I immediately started there because I was just, I was looking for every lifeline and that was God. And that was getting into therapy and getting your, putting yourself out there to have those um, releases, if that makes sense. So I think that would be my biggest advice. Mm, it does. Yeah. Yeah. I think the the natural reaction for people sometimes in pain is to become like a recluse to pull Mm -hmm. into themselves and hide. And I definitely did that for a period. So it, like Kristen said, like honor the point that you're at, but sometimes the moment, like that's when you need to like really sign up for a grief group or, you know, Mm because even Kristen talked about in her grief group, somebody 
had just joined and they lost somebody 35 years ago. So I think it's a lot of people don't deal with their grief. I think they just push it deep down and try to just live. Um, But I, I don't, I feel like, I mean, I guess everybody's different, but for me, like I have to face it head on. Yeah. That's so good. I'm just like, show me where to go next. And it's scary. And it feels like I'm walking off a cliff some days, like for mother's day, I went back to our childhood home and it felt Mm. almost like I wanted to throw up at the idea of being there. But I just like faced it. I was just like, let's do this. (laughs) Like I just, I don't know. That's, I don't know if it's good advice, but that's kind of how I've, I've dealt with it. And, um, yeah, just be kind to yourself to don't compare your grief there is to no our grief loss or scale. anybody else's because <laughs> there is no scale on loss. So. No. Mm. Yeah, that's that's so so good. Um, one more question, just about I'm just thinking of what somebody would want to know or what somebody would want to ask that they wouldn't feel comfortable asking people in grief. Mm-hmm. Um, does it go away? <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. We're only seven months in. Kristen, yeah. I'll, Do you I'll answer feel, first. Is there relief? And then... What is the pro? Like, does it? And it's it's a it's kind of sounds insensitive because we know she never goes away from your memories yeah. and your mind. But is no, there it's good, relief yeah. to the? You know what I mean? Like, is there yeah. relief to the trauma there, of it all? Yeah. So there, at least for me, there has been relief as far as, um, doing the therapy and doing the, I do a therapy called ART where Mm. it's actually, um, kind of working with your emotional and logical brain and trying to balance them out. Cause when you get into trauma and I'm not an expert, but this this. is, Mm -hmm. yeah, but this is what my therapist has told me. Um, your emotional side takes over. Um, so if you can get to where you can balance that out. So I will say like, it's gotten better as far as like the trauma feeling where I can't get out of bed. I feel like I, nothing matters. Like Mm -hmm. in the beginning for a long time, and it still feels like this on some days, I just feel like, you know, things at work or things that people are talking about are just so pointless. And like, Mm -hmm. I have that feeling of like, none of this matters, (laughs) you know? Mm. Um, I feel like that's gotten a little better and I focus, mm-hmm. try to focus on the living and not on the, yeah. the you know, what's not here. Mm-hmm. Um, so it does get better in terms of that, but the pain, honestly, like it's like I can distract myself from it. Um, but it's always yeah. there. Like every conversation that I have, every interaction that I have, what I'm actually thinking about <laughs> is my mom. It's crazy. Her. Like yeah, I'm always yeah. thinking about her constantly, no matter what I'm doing. It's yeah. like so hard. So I think it does get better. I have a friend who lost her father over five years ago and she keeps telling me that it does get better. I was diagnosed with a syndrome that is incurable and I'm in you know chronic pain, right? And it's amazing what my body oh. has learned to live with. Um, If I think about it, the pain is there constantly, Mm. but my body has learned to live with that pain. And so it's very similar. It's like, yeah, it's like that pain is always underlining and it's always there. And if I think about it, I can instantly cry, you know? So, but it's like the longer, the Mm -hmm. more time that passes, it's like my body is learning. My, my mind is learning to live with it. Wow. Well, y'all, thank you so much for sharing this journey. I'm sure it like brings up a lot, you know, and I appreciate you. And I can, I know I can speak on behalf of any listener dealing with this or loving somebody who is just thank you for talking about it and for sharing your journey. And I just know your mom would be so proud of all of you. I mean, and I, I'm, I'm going to link, um, as I, um, write the memos, I'll make sure to link that podcast with her. Thank you. So that, that I think people will really love that because it's just such a rare thing to hear. Yeah. I mean, she was like an angel. (laughs) (laughs) I just can't even, I, I'm just, I'm being a mom, I think I'm more obsessed with moms than yeah. most people, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, or but I just it's just so incredible that you all I mean, she raised four kids and they all felt loved unconditionally no matter what. 
And yeah, and I will interject because I feel like I feel don't. her pushing me here to say like Good. she was not perfect. Like yes, we went through a lot of. She stuff. was an imperfect angel. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She I never love her wanted even more people being to imperfect. Think, yep. Yeah, <laughs> she was always clear that like she went through mm-hmm. the s h i t too. Like she uh-huh. <laughs> she had some rough times in life just like all of us and I think Mm -hmm. also maybe the lesson in what you're saying is like we remember the good like I never think about that stuff it's wonderful you know your kids will do the same they're gonna remember all the good amen that is I love that I I love that because yeah it's so easy to just kind of glorify something into oblivion you know as and saint them and I love it Megan I love it you're like but she would want you to know girl (laughs) Yeah, she'd be that's mad at me if I didn't interject. That's my yeah. kind. That's my kind of woman right there, who's just like, but don't forget the crazy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh man, I well, thank you for making me an honorary member <laughs> oh, of yeah. the family today, oh and it's been such a joy. And I feel really inspired to go be mom right now. I'm going to pick up my son for Yay. his um, from his inventors convention, so and cute. so um, this has been really inspiring for me. Thank you for opening up your hearts and um, I'm so excited and I'm going to sleep with my makeup (laughs) on tonight just for y'all. Do it, girl. (laughs) And everybody check out their podcast. (laughs) Girl, I slept in my makeup. (laughs) 